here, so I want to give her a quick shout out before she retires. Uh, she'll be missed here, uh, but she's been a great help. So shout out to her and her classes over in Okinawa. Even and odd functions, let's do it. Give it a whirl here. What is an even function? Well, this is what they look like. So what I want you to do is take a quick second and say, okay, why are these three functions? All three of these functions are even. Real quick, think about it and be ready. Tell me why they're even. All right, so now you go ahead and tell me why they're even. That's weird if you're talking to the screen right now. I hope someone's looking at you. Thing and oh, you're talking to Mr. Brust, huh? Uh, so why they even? Hopefully you came up with their symmetric, right? Check this out. If I draw a line right here, boom. This is the axis of symmetry for all these. So even functions are symmetric. Well, how are they symmetric? They are symmetric about the y-axis. So if you fold it in half on the y-axis, it's going to be a mirror image. So that's nice, easy way, way to tell what an even function is. So graphically, it's nice. You just can you draw the axis of symmetry? How about odd functions? A little bit trickier to see, but here are three odd functions. See if you can come up with the reasons why these three graphs are odd functions. All right, so again, hopefully you came up with they are symmetric. This one's not quite as easy to see. It's not just folding along the x or y axis. Uh, what actually happens is if you take this piece right here, it's symmetric around this point, the origin. So what we call, it's symmetric about the origin. Now it has a couple of different names. We're going to use symmetric about the origin, but you could say it has point symmetry because it's symmetric around this point. It's also a rotation. What we're doing is we're rotating this chunk right here to make this chunk over here. It's 180 degree rotation. So this piece slides around to make that piece. So again, this is symmetric here. If you think about this piece rotating, so let's say I'm rotating it a little bit so it looks like this and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more finally after 180 degree rotation it gets to that that looks crazy but I can keep rotating and what does that look like It looks really cool it's a pinwheel that's kinda of hurt my mind so it's a pinwheel it's one way that you may remember it is a uh, pinwheel and I think about this check it out maybe this visual will help check out this pinwheel whoa that's weird with the line on it I can't get rid of it. But check this out. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Symmetric about the origin. Imagine the dog food bowl is the origin. Here are these little dogs uh, going around it. You're rotating around that origin until it gets the other one. That's cool. I could watch that all day long. That's exciting. That's way more exciting than Mr. Sullivan or uh, Mr. Kelly's videos. Uh, so this piece, so again, it goes back to this. You could do a 90 degree rotation would be this. This is 180 degree rotation. This is a 270 degree rotation. So we're going to use symmetric around the origin. Um, I'm kind of getting motion sickness. Let's get rid. I can't get rid of it. They don't want to go. The dogs don't want to leave. Uh, so that's odd functions there, the symmetric around that. So can we look at some graphs? Are these functions even, odd, or neither? So before we get to the actual graphs, I thought we'd actually look at a couple of pictures here. So the first picture, let's look at the Mr. Sullivan. Uh, don't, this picture you would think is an odd picture of Mr. Sullivan. Um, he's got his hat turns on backwards. That's always a bad sign with Mr. Sullivan. Run away if you see this. It means he's not in a good mood. Bad things are going to happen. Uh, it kind of looks like he's praying here. I don't think he's praying. This is actually his educational gun. He's getting ready to shoot some truth, shoot some knowledge here. How is he? Is he? I know he's an odd dude, but really he's symmetric here. This would be. This would mean that he is actually even. So Mr. Sullivan is actually an even function. Do you, let's skip over here, John Travolta. So check this out. What is he doing? He is actually odd. And this is what we got from Miss Pope over here. Boom. Not that Miss Pope's odd by any stretch. This is one part of it. If you do the rotation, this is the other part of it, his other arm. So John Travolta is odd. He is, when he's dancing in Saturday Night Fever, he's odd. I thought of more dancing would be what, uh, YMCA, remember Village People? You know, the Y is obviously symmetric. Uh, the M is symmetric. What is the C? It's neither. It's not down the middle. It's not rotation. So this is actually none. This is neither. And then this is also a lot of even. So for the most part, YMCA is pretty even. They do get a little odd. <laughs> they don't get odd. I mean, they look odd. Like their little theme was pretty odd, but uh, not the thing. So let's clear these out and look at the real graphs right here. Look at these. Real quick, go burn through these and see what you think on these. All right, number one, I think is definitely even. If you draw the dotted line right here, it flips. It's a mirror image. So I'm going to drag this over here and say, yes, that is definitely even. How about this one? This one's kind of tricky. It's not symmetric around the y-axis. No way. Is it around the origin? No. I mean, 
if I spin this point, it would actually end up down here. So this piece would actually turn into this piece. This is the neither. I threw a neither at you. This is nothing. It's not symmetric around the origin or around the y-axis. Probably what's left over, I'm guessing this last one's odd. And does it turn out to be odd? Sure, this piece right here, if you rotate, it becomes this piece right here. So that is definitely the odd function right here. So that's how the graphs shape up, even neither odd. Fantastic. So let's move away from the graphs. Oops, and then I included a graph. <laughs> let's use the graph to move away from the graph, if that makes any sense at all. We're going to kind of break this down to algebraically. So what I want to be able to do is, if I give you half of an even function, I want to be able to draw the rest. So I know it's symmetric, symmetric around the y-axis. So I know it's going to, if I had to draw the right side, well, I know this point will be, this point here will be this point here. And I know the x-intercept here will be the x-intercept here. They're all mirror images, yeah? So it's just the mirror image of what's happening and it's going to look something like this. It's going to go straight back up, come back down, and then back up. Maybe yours is a little bit straighter than mine, but you got to get the idea. That would be the evenness of it. So now what I want to do is actually write the formal definition. So when I look at this, it's easy to see negative 1 and positive 1 are the same point. Aren't they both? They're both 2, right? So that point up there is negative 1 comma 2 is that point, and this is positive 1, 2. So you can see the y values are the same. So how we'd write that is we'd say the f of negative 1 equals 2 and the f of 1 equals 2. Or since they both equal 2, can't we just say the f of negative 1 equals the f of 1? That's the same thing. So this must be true for every single x. So we just kind of did that numerically. We looked at one single point, but I want to do it forever. So what am I going to do? If I pick this point negative x, it's going to make what? It's going to make the f of negative x. I don't know what that is. Just like the f of negative 1 made 2, I'm going to plug it into my function. So this is a more generic way to write that point. And this is pretty good if you can start thinking in terms like this. This point down here is actually negative x, f of negative x. So what does it match up? It matches up with the positive x. And what is this point? This is the positive x is the f of x. So that's that point right there. It's what comes out of my function. So here I defined it with numbers. That's great. You can count. But maybe I don't have the numbers. So I'm really saying what has to be true. I'm saying, in this case, I called x1 as an example because I like numbers. But really I'm saying the f of negative x must equal what? The f of x. If that's true, you are in business. So that is the actual formula. So any x over here, the when I plug in x and I get a, uh, the f of x, it must be the same thing over here. They must match up. Uh, and the better your drawing is, the better that'll look. So that's the rule. Write that down, have that, and we're good to go. How about this? Let's try to draw the odd side of this. So the odd side, this point actually rotates around and comes up to here. This point rotates around and comes to here. This guy over here rotates around down to here in this last intercept goes to here. So when I draw this one, it goes up, down, and back up, something like that. So that is an odd function. I did that little pinwheel. Don't make me break the dogs out again. It's spun around there. It's kind of spinning around. So now it's weird because check this out. If this is my point x right here, well, this is my, this is the f of x. Remember, this is what comes out up here. This is the f of x the y value. Essentially, that's the, you know, the way of saying y. Well, in this case, what would negative x be? It's here, but check that out. Negative x is going to make the f of negative x, but you can see they don't equal each other. Here they matched up perfectly, right? These two match these two. These two match these two. This matches, like everything had a mirror. They were the same. This is not a match. So let's try it with some numbers real quick, because numbers kind of help help my brain a little bit here. Uh, if I say the f of negative 1, it's going to equal what? It's going to equal negative 3, according to my picture. Just like the f of 1 equals what? Positive 3. So they don't equal each other this time. Bummer. But this is saying the f of negative x equals a negative. The f of x equals the positive. So the signs are just different, yeah? That's our only problem. So really, I'm saying the f of negative x, when I plug in negative x, I get this point down here, which is opposite of this point. So I don't, I can't say it equals the f of x, it equals the negative f of x. So what does this mean? If I put in, if x is 1, I put in the f of negative 1, I get negative 3. Put in the f of 1, you get 3, but then that negative sign changes it to negative 3, so they equal each other. 
That is awesome. If that makes sense to you, you are in business. Uh, if not, for now, just memorize the formula, play with it, practice it until it really starts flowing for you. Uh, but those are two rules to prove even and odd. So can we do it without a picture? Sure. Let's just go ahead and solve these. I'm going to give you some pointers as I go. I want to know, is the function even, odd, or neither? So when I look at this right off the bat, what am I looking at? Well, I see a cube here and a 1. That's odd. Those are odd numbers. So I'm guessing it's odd. So I'm going to start off by saying, OK, is this an odd function? So I'm going to say, does the f of negative x equal the negative f of x? So this is like an algebraic proof. And I don't know. So I'm going to put a little question mark here. I don't know. Is this going to work out or not? So into my function, I'm going to plug in negative x. So wherever there was an x, replace it with negative x. So this is going to look like negative 2. Replace x with negative x. Cube it. 5 times negative x. Awesome. Does that equal the negative? And again, put this in parentheses here. It's the whole function. Negative the function. So my function, I'm just going to rewrite it. And it's going to look something like this. And then now it's just a matter of simplifying. So what happens when you cube a negative? Well, a negative to an odd power is still negative. So I've got negative 2 times a negative is positive 2x cubed. Negative times that 5 is minus 5x. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative. So what's a negative times negative? 2x cubed. And then a negative times 5. Oh, look what happened here. I was right. So this is true. They do equal each other. So I just prove that they are, in fact, odd. That is cool. Very cool. How about this one? When I'm browsing this one over, I see a squared. I'm not sure what an absolute value is going to do, but a squared is an even. So I'm going to say, well, maybe it's an even. So I'm going to say, does the f of negative x equal the f of x? And if you have a hard time with this rule, I always think of like a parabola. I think it's the easiest way to think about it. Here's a parabola. Boom. And I start to think about it like this is x, this point equals this point. So I know it's even. It looks really even. Symmetric. See how the x, this point equals this point? So I know the f of x equals the f of negative x. So that's an easy way to remember, uh, for me anyway, the, the evenness. Is that is that appropriate? Evenness? I like it. Let's use it. Evenness. So is this one even? So my, this is a question mark. I don't know. Is this going to be even? So we're going to plug in negative x wherever there's an x. So I'm looking at negative x squared plus 1 all over the absolute value of negative x. Does that equal the function? So I'm just rewriting it here. So that's nice and easy, kind of just rewrite it. So now let's simplify it. Remember, to an even power, it's going to be positive. So negative to an even power is positive. So I'm looking at x squared plus 1. What's the absolute value of negative x? It's positive x. Come over here. I'm just going to rewrite the top. What's the absolute value of x? It is just x. So do these equal each other? Yes, they do. So I was right in guessing even. Yay. There it is even odd fantastic so one more I'm gonna give you one more and since I you when I look this one over say okay what do I think it is well the top looks pretty even the bottom looks pretty odd so I'm gonna guess it's neither so how in the world do you prove neither well it takes a little bit of work first you have to say hey are they even so I'm gonna ask that is this even then I'm gonna say well if it's not even is this thing odd? And again, I don't know. If it's not even, if it's not odd, then it's neither. So let's go through and try even. So maybe I, I saw that fourth, so I think, ah, it could be even. So I'm going to put the negative x to the fourth on top all over negative x cubed minus 1. And that's going to equal the function. So I just rewrite the function over here. No problem. So do a little simplifying. Uh, negative x to an even power will still be x to the fourth. That's going to stay negative. And is that true? Does this match up right here? No, that's a negative x cubed over here. It's a positive x cubed. So this is a no. They did not equal each other. So it's not even. So maybe, look at my how I spelled even. That is so weird. I can't let that stay. Somebody's going to make fun of me. Mr. Bean's not going to like that. I'm going to change that to an end. There we go. All right, so over here, sorry, I got sidetracked. Is, maybe this is true then. I don't know, so it's not even. Plug it in. So I already started this, didn't I? Like the f of negative x, you already know it. Like I've already done it right here. So I know it already. So let's recycle it. You know, it's no point in doing it again. Does that equal the f of negative x? This is where it gets tricky. So really play close attention here. You've got this negative in front of the entire function. So you've got options, you know. When I got, with this negative in front, 
What does that mean? Well, think of an easier problem. Think of negative 1 half. What is negative 1 half? It really means negative 1 over 2 or 1 over negative 2. These are all the same thing. What it doesn't mean is negative 1 over negative 2. Definitely doesn't mean that. So I don't care if you put the negative in front, the negative on top, the negative on bottom. Just don't put it both or else you're changing it up. So in this case, I'm not going to put it on top. Where am I going to put it? I think I'm going to put it on bottom to try to match it up. So if I do that on bottom, remember this is where it gets tricky. This is actually going to be this. The whole bottom is negative. So does this match up? Again, it looks like it could be close, but I don't think it's going to work, is it? Let me get rid of some, make some room here. Um, does it match up? If I distribute that negative on bottom, so that's negative x cubed. So I'm looking at x to the fourth. Distribute that, you get negative x cubed plus 1. Oh, bummer. Remember, so the whole bottom is negative or the whole top is negative. Uh, or the whole thing in front is negative, but not both. So this didn't work out. That's a no. So it's not even, it's not odd. So it's going to be neither. Kind of like the C and YMCA. Speaking of, that's the end of the video. I didn't know which dance to go with disco. Village people, I think we got to rock out with some village people, some YMCA. Uh, good luck on the mastery check. I hope it goes well. 